All right, we're back with part two of this three-part series on drill bits and sharpening of drills. Uh, as I uh, continue to pre prepare for this, I keep running across uh, uh, different things I wanted to show you. Uh, I got so much stuff in my shop, sometimes I forget about some of it, but uh, this is a, a partial set anyway of stubby drill bits, and they are most handy when you compare them to uh, regular drills as far as the length is concerned most handy for uh, getting into tight spaces and when you're using the milling machine sometimes you don't want to raise and lower the table and uh, this saves you quite a few cranks so get yourself a set of the stubby ones as well now all of the drill bits that I've shown you are made out of high-speed steel there might be some cobalt ones or some that have some other uh, ingredients in them but basically they're high-speed steel Avoid at all costs any carbon steel bits. I don't, I'm not sure they make them anymore, but they used to be the cheaper sets and they were available for uh, woodworking and so on. But when you go to sharpen them, you'll notice that the color of the sparks is quite a bit different and uh, they won't hold an edge. And if you got any, throw them out. Uh, another type of bit that you will, uh, well, you're not going to really run into them and uh, this isn't going to show up at all, but this is one that's solid carbide and generally they'll be handled separately or maybe held in a special tube and if you ever uh, they have a slightly different color to them uh, than the high-speed steel and they are quite heavy being about one and a half times as heavy if you compare them with uh, another drill bit of the equal uh, uh, dimensions uh, very expensive these would be useful for maybe drilling out a broken uh, old hardened screw or something like that. I wouldn't expect that you can drill out a tap or something that hard, but uh, these can be useful. Uh, if you're going to resharpen them, you'll have to sharpen them on a special wheel, a diamond wheel, or a green wheel. There are many textbooks and other aids to help you in uh, sharpening drill bits or identifying parts and, and so on and giving you the different speeds and feeds that you need to drill, but Here's a handy little booklet called Machinist Practical Guide by the Morse Twist Drill Company. You can put it in your pocket, but there's pictures in there of, uh, of the tips of the drill bits and, uh, and a lot, lot of very good information. There are also many good uh, textbooks on the subject, so be sure and read that. Uh, now, uh, I haven't really said anything about speeds yet, but uh, there's just really two rules of thumb that you need to know, and one is that for soft materials, you use high speeds. For hard materials, you lose, use slow speeds. For small, and the other one is, for small bits, you want to use uh, fast speeds. And as the drills get larger and larger, the speeds have to be slower and slower. Now those can all be looked up in books, or tables, or charts. But those are the general rules that will get you by without uh, ever stopping uh, your work. So speed is very, very important. If you run them too fast, the big ones too fast, you're going to dull them or burn up the tip. And uh, when you see sparks flying or they turn blue, you know you have drilled too fast. All right, let's talk about the parts of a drill bit. There's really three main parts, and that would be the shank, and then the body, and then the point or the tip. And uh, when we go to sharpen them, that's what we're really interested in because there's nothing else that we can uh, change. Now, these are the flutes, the spiral groove that runs from uh, the middle here and to the tip. And that serves uh, two functions, three functions. One is it helps to form the overall geometry of the drill bit. Number two, it allows the chips to escape from the hole. And number three, it allows the coolant and oil to get down to the end where it is needed. Now let's discuss drill geometry. Uh, in a smaller, this is a half inch bit in my hand, but actually it looks kind of small, but and it's hard to explain things when you have something that's too small. And back in my prime when I was a teacher, I had large teaching aids that I could show the whole class this at one time. So the bigger the bit, the easier it is to, uh, to uh, show you uh, what, what it is we're trying to do. 
and uh, the one I'm holding now is about a three-quarter inch bit and even that in a way is too small so what I'm going to show you now is a real he-man drill bit and matter of fact this is about the biggest I've ever seen this is a three inch twist drill with about a number five Morse taper on it and just for a laugh I looked this up in the MSC book a few minutes ago and we're talking about a four or five hundred dollar drill bit here and this is a drill that would take a lot of horsepower to turn wouldn't it and it's uh, uh, you can see I examined this and there's quite a bit of damage to the tang here where that has been halfway twisted because the torque would be tremendous also on the tip here there's quite a big chunk that has been lost over the years so there's some damage to this but that is of uh, no consequence to our discussion of the thing uh, when you have a real big bit like this you would have to run that in a big machine and it would have to run so slow that you actually should be able to count the uh, revolutions and I I would think that this would probably be run at uh, 20 or 30 rpm so that's how slow they gotta go this is a drill sharpening gauge this is another little cheapy but it would be just as effective this uh, this one fits on a hook rule and can be used for other purposes as well and the the uh, common ones that you buy are 59 degrees and that is the angle that uh, 98 percent of all common drill bits are sharpened at and it can be held on to the uh, uh, drill bit in a manner like this to check the angle then there's also uh, well now I'm going to shift to this larger one here so that maybe we can really see what we're doing. The uh, overall included angle of a drill bit should be 118 degrees. Now that is uh, 59 times 2 if you haven't already figured that out. I made uh, an extra large gauge here it's just out of cardboard so that you can see what I'm doing and again that would be the angle that we sharpen it at, 59 degrees. Now this isn't as easy as you think because there's several other things that have to be taken into consideration at the same time. Remember that on a drill bit all of the cutting takes place on the cutting lip which is right here. Drill bits do not cut out here like a reamer does, they cut on the tip. So this is where you're going to see a uh, damage on a drill bit as it gets dull. And then we have clearance here from uh, my finger right here to the heel which is 10 or 12 degrees and uh, that is a uh, sometimes uh, debatable on how much that should be but if it's too much you're going to wear uh, and dull real quickly right here. So something like 10 to 12 degrees and that's what people get wrong. So that's the most important thing that you need to watch is that 10 to 12 degrees. I have seen brand new drill bits from China that have either a negative angle there or a zero angle. and Brand new. But uh, you know what I think of that Chinese stuff. So that is no good. Uh, 10 to 12 degrees. Also remember that a drill bit, uh, perhaps I can show you on this one. I didn't mention this but uh, we have here the, the silvery part is the land and that's the only part that touches the side uh, of the hole. The rest here is called body clearance and that greatly reduces friction and maybe it'll show up here on the big one. Again this is the land and the rest here is the body clearance. So imagine if the entire uh, part here rubbed the side of the hole that you'd have a lot more friction and heat. So that's, that's the purpose of that. It looks like a cutting edge, but in fact, it is not a cutting edge.